Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today I wanted to address something that I get asked all the time, day in and day out. Is this item worth something? I know that seems like a general term, but people ask me about all kinds of things, very common things down to the very obscure niche that no one would have ever thought about. And let me just state this right off the bat. Almost any category, any niche that you sell in can have something in that category that will have a good value to it. Most niches, most categories, most anything that you could sell, about 95% of everything in those categories that you could sell in isn't worth much at all. It's that 5% that makes the difference and makes me the most money. That top 5% of any category niche that I am in. The biggest key factor is understanding the art of reselling. Now there is an art to it. There is a skill to it. A lot of the items that we list and sell, we sell for far more than almost anybody else on the platform sells. And that all ties into the artistic aspect of it. Digging in deeper and understanding that the value is based on a perceived value. What the customer perceives is the value. Let's say take a iPhone for an example. They're a thousand bucks for a real nice iPhone. Part wise, maybe a hundred bucks into it. But the perceived value is tied to the name. The brand that comes with Apple is why most people pay that kind of money. It's a luxury name. They want the prestige of owning the latest Apple. I'm not an Apple person. No problem if you are. It's not my thing. But the point of it is the whole atmosphere around it. Apple has built this perceived value of what their phone is worth which is well over what most other phones on the market are worth. Again, it's the same material in both phones. Of course, there is some software, but almost any phone, even an Android-based phone, will be basically the same thing. You can get most any app that you can find on the Apple on almost any other phone on the market. So again, they've got a perceived value. With a lot of the stuff that we sell, I push the perceived value aspect. Even if I see prices of items that we sell for a third of what I'm listing them for, I still list them at those higher prices. And in many cases, I will get that list price or at least double what many other people get for the same item. Again, it's perceived value. It's knowing how to read the comp sales ended and sold listings from the same items that you're looking up. You got to be able to read into that. And I've talked about this before. If there's six or less items that have sold and they've sold over a year time frame, you know, and there's none up right now of the item that you're selling, you can increase the price over what you've seen the other ones sell if they've all sold for a certain range. So let's say you have one item and you go to research that item and you found six all in the say eight to ten dollar range that all sold as a bin on Terapeak over the last year. So that every two months, one of those have sold. So at any given time, it's possible that there are none other up. And most of the people who purchase, who buy things off of eBay, do not do what us sellers do, which is research what they went for before. Now, some do know that and some will look up prices, but the majority, and I'm probably talking about 80% or better, of those who buy from us do not look up the prices. They judge the prices on other items they bought by similar sellers that sell similar type or like items or in their past experience of what they considered the value on something. Now, other people don't even think about what the value may be. They only consider what you've got it listed for and what they would be willing to pay. Again, a price guide or anything like that isn't useful in my market in these days for what I do because that price guide doesn't hold a relevant, I guess, basis for the prices compared to the internet. It, something is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. So that's the point. That's why there's a perceived value. Just like um, advertising and things like that where they build in all these catchy tunes or getting a uh, famous Hollywood star to advertise it. It's perceived. You perceive that this famous person who has a lot of money thinks that that item is great. It's again, it's a perceived value. If let's say some star is advertising an item, it may not be worth anything. It may be a bad item. They're just getting paid to advertise it. Again, it pushes right back to perceived value. That's why I say there is an art to this. You can sell almost anything on the net in any category and get a profit on it. 
You know, not every item though, of course, will do that, but almost every single category or niche has items that will sell for those high prices. So you just have to know that. And in some cases, you can see an item that you're checking up comps on and there's dozens of them that didn't sell for very high. And all of those dozens of people may have not put something in that title or used proper keywords or followed along with what everybody else did and didn't look at it from an outside aspect. So let's say we're going to list some other item and we found 24 of them in the ended listings that all sold in the $20 range. All Most of the time I find items that we sell in the bin buy it now options, so they're not run at auctions. Most people these days don't run as many auctions as you would think. Auctions are a way of the past in my book. Buy it nows are, are what the fad is these days. Just like an Amazon, you can just buy it, be done with it, and you got nothing to worry about. So that's usually what I see compared uh, for my comps when I'm searching are most always bins for those items. So if there's 24 that sold for $20 and they're all bins, in many cases, I'll look at these and realize that they put them maybe in the same category as everyone else, or they left something off that title, like a city. A name, a last name is a good good example of this. Cities and last names sell things for us in the vintage categories all the time. Even if, let's say, there's 20 of these other items up and no one listed the city in it, I will price it higher than those because, again, in vintage collectible items, the city means a lot. We also sell 5-10% sometimes in some categories of items based on the last name, and it will be bought by somebody who has that very same last name. Whether they're a family member or not, they like putting stuff like that in office. Business professionals do that as well. Again, you got to know the, the art of digging into these and figuring it out. In some cases, let's say you've got an item with, say, a pug dog on it or something. And everybody else zoomed in on some other aspect of it. And you found eight comps of that exact same postcard or whatever you have with a pug dog on it and all the other folks sold it for 10 bucks but they didn't list pug in the title now i would list pug in the title and list that in a collectibles section for animals under dogs with pugs and most people who haven't done that aren't going to get the sales rate that i do i will get more for it selling some items as a pug in the dog collectible section that I ever would and say if it's a postcard in that postcard section again there's an art to this there really honestly is again people say you know I put high prices on things I did a video the other day on postcards and I quoted the price that I should get out of these items and I had quite a few people saying that those prices were high I've sold three and the first three items out of there and I'm gonna pop them on my Instagram one at a time and you can see that they actually sold a couple of those three items sold a dollar or more more than my estimates on them so my estimates are pretty darn good when I base my prices on I base them on what I think I could sell them for let me include a link up here if you'd like to check that video out. But in that video, I've got the price I'm going to list it for and the price I should get for it. Again, these are my values on them. I've sold probably in that video 15 or so of those postcards already at least once or twice through the last, say, five or six years. So I know what I should get out of those. Again, I don't really care what other people put on those types of items. Those postcards in that video, I did not research a single one of them. Those prices are based on what my knowledge is of that paper category. Now, there's artists that did work in those postcards, such as Clap Saddle and Winch and things like that. I know those folks. I've had those similar ones before, and I judge them based on my common knowledge on what those types of postcards routinely go for. Now, I'm not saying I don't look up a lot of stuff. I look up the majority of what I sell, but postcards and paper in general, I don't have to look those up you'll get the hang of things like that after a while. So again, the bottom line is the art of reselling is understanding the difference between what everybody else is doing and what you could see as the perceived value. In many cases, the perceived value, depending on how you word it, the categories you put, how your images look, how you do with zoom ins and things like that for those items, you could do far better with a perceived value than you could ever with what other people sell them for. Don't just always take for granted that the comps are exactly what they should go for. As I've said, in most cases, I charge in vintage collectible items, especially paper, three times, sometimes even more than that, what I see comps going for. It's all depending on how many comps are there. Now, if you are looking back and you see some paper item and there's a hundred 150 comps and they're all in the same price range that's pretty much a given that that price is locked in in there and most people won't pay much more for it 
But again, if you know your areas, you know where you can play around, certain things might not go in the same area. Let's say with that example, there's the 150 of them about the same price, same thing, same item. They all may have listed them in one or two categories. There's still maybe a third category out there that can still hold a value and will still be the best place to sell that item in. Now this is for eBay specifically, but in some cases this can work on other sites. We do Etsy as well, so in some cases Etsy you can move things around or title it a little different and still crank out some better prices on it. Same thing goes for Amazon in some cases, mostly collectibles and vintage. We do sell on the collectible section and vintage as well as a handmade section on Amazon. So those are just things to think about. So when you're looking at something, whatever it is, look at and consider a perceived value. Consider how you would market that. A good thought on that is when you're going to a store and the items in the window are the ones that they're pushing. They'll put it on a mannequin so it looks better, so it's more appealing. It's right there in front of you. They want to draw you in. So you, again, you've got to bring people into your store. You've got to have the best picture, the best keywords to start off with. That's where this all starts off with. You can get more for something if you've got the right keyword, the right category, and the right photo than other people because of that. Again, perceived value. If yours looks better than everybody else's, they're going to consider it to be better than most other people's. If you've got tons and thousands of items in the same category and they're all priced in that similar range, they're also going to perceive that you know how to price them and that your prices are correct. That's another key aspect of having a huge amount, 70 to 80,000 items up in your stores. That is another key fact that most people won't tell you or you won't hear. So this all works together. That is why I can get away with some higher prices also because I've got so many items up. In some categories we sell in, I'm 20% of all of those items on eBay. In some categories, I'm 60% of all items on eBay. Those are smaller, tiny niches though, but I do dominate those categories. My prices run those categories. That's how I play the game. That's partially why I put up a lot of items. There is an honest art to this. I've said it many times through this video. Perceived value is all I care about for the most aspect. I'd rather sell one item higher than have to sell two or three for the exact same amount of what I could get for that one high dollar item. It's less work. It gives me a big boost as well, too. So that is about it for today. Hopefully that gives you some thought on this. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell your friends. Because each drop of Wesson is filtered 24 times to make Wesson cook as light as it looks. Just wait till they taste your chicken. It's the see-through cooking oil. Wesson cooks as light as it looks.